Hey guys, welcome back to a new amazing video in which we are going to see how to save media files which are images, videos and audio files into our media store. And let's first understand what media store is. You can imagine media store as a catalog of your files or media files specifically as I said videos and images and audio files. Media store keeps track of these files where they are located, their types, their sizes, when they were modified, when they were added and all the metadata of those files. And Media Store works actually in Android 10 and above, so it doesn't work in Android 9 or less, only Android 10 and above. So let's get started with the video. All right, now here we are in Android Studio. I have created this class called Media Store Util, in which I'm going to create the functions to save uh, photos and videos and audio files. Of course, in your app, you need to have these in your repository, since this is a data related task. So this has to be in your repository, but now I'm, I don't have any repository or view model or anything. I'm just trying to show you the functions, how they work. And uh, yeah, so let's start actually with images. We can create a suspend fun save image. And what you want to save is a bitmap. So at the end, you just want a bitmap, all right, like this. So if you are using XML, you can get a bitmap from your image with Glide. If you are using Compose, you can get it with Quail. In the end, you just want a bitmap as I said. So try getting that bitmap, all right? And then passing it to this function and then this function will take the responsibility of saving it. The first thing we need is that since this is an IO operation, we need to do this in the IO dispatcher. So with context dispatchers.io because as I said, this is an IO operation. It needs to be in the IO dispatcher, which gives us a coroutine scope. The first thing we need is a content resolver. So what, let's call it resolver, is going to be context dot content resolver. Actually, Media Store does need context, so you can just pass it like this. Of course, if you are in your repository, you can just inject the application where you also have access to this content resolver because this is an Android framework specific thing, right? And we use this one to save the file or the image to the media store. So this is how we connect to that media store and save it there with the content resolver. We need then an image collection. So what image collection is going to be media store dot images dot media dot get content URE. I will explain to of course, now we are going to pass a media store not this one media store dot volume external primary of course with media store we save those files to the external storage if we check an emulator here let's open our file explorer like this this is the external storage which is accessible by all apps so this is not the internal storage but the external storage in which we have all our folders like the sim in which we have the camera folder usually in a real app and uh, yeah, so images will be saving that image to the pictures folder, the video to movies, and then the audio to maybe music or alarms, whatever we want. All right, let's continue. Simply, we need this image collection to tell it that we want this in the external storage. Let's continue by creating a variable of the current time in millis, var time in millis is going to be system dot current time in millis. Uh, we need this one to just tell when was this file added or taken if it's an image recorded, if it's a video or modified if we modify it or even to make the name of this exact image unique. So we actually name it by its current time in millis. So next images won't have the same current time in millis, of course, because that's time. And then we need an image content values variable var image content values. That is going to be content values dot apply. So here we're going to set some metadata to our image. As I said, when it was taken, its name, its type, its path in which it's going to be saved, all of that metadata will be actually inside this image content values. So let's start with it. Put, so we start putting those. We need the key and the value. The first thing we need is where is it going to be located? It's going to be in media store dot images. So we need to tell that this is an image like this. If it's an audio, of course, we're going to go for audio. If it's a video, we're going to go for video. Now we're dealing with images. So images dot 
media dot display name so let's first add the name of the image that as i said is going to be a string and this is time in millis and then we can add image so time in millis and then image to tell this is an image and then of course it's type which is going to be a jpeg dot jpg okay so this is a jpeg image the next thing we're going to put is where it's going to be located now so media store dot media commons dot relative path let's actually make this one as the very first one even before the name so let's put it as the first one and then where it's going to be located is going to be environment dot directory pictures so as i said it's going to be inside pictures so the path is going to be the pictures directory which is the one that i mentioned in the emulator all right after the name we can just copy now this one and let's move on for the type of the image so mine type like this as i said this is a jpeg so we can simply just write image slash gpg like this because this is a, a jpeg image we can just copy this a few more times like this and then the next thing is going to be the date it was taken we have date taken date added so if you are building a camera app then you technically take an image so you want to use this one if you just downloaded the image from somewhere so you didn't really take that image you can use this one if you modified that image you can use this one let's use added or taken so it depends if this is a camera app you can use this one if it's not a camera app you can use this one so just go for any one you want the date taken technically is going to be time in millis since yeah that's exactly the date it was taken in the last thing is is pending and that is going to be one so pending means this media is waiting to be saved into the media store and then after actually complete saving we'll set this flag to zero but for now it's pending so it is one and this is it actually for our image content values so what do we need next we then need to have a ure from our image content values and our image collection so val image media store ure because from this ure we are going to get the image that will be saved so this is going to be our resolver dot insert and then pass in our image collection image content values and then we need to make sure that this URE is not known. So image media store URE dot let here we get a URE. Since we can have crashes right here, we're going to use a try catch block. When an exception happens, so let's just write that. All I'm going to do is print the stack trace and then it's just delete this URE with our resolver. Resolver dot delete passing the URE and then null null for where and selection arguments because we don't really have those now how if we don't have a, an exception what are we going to do we are going to use our resolver again to actually save that with an output stream so open output stream passing my ure and then again i need to make sure that my output stream isn't null here i just get an output stream like this that i can use now and since this is an image i need to compress it so to compress it i'm going to use the bitmap i passed dot compress pass in the format it's a jpeg image so bitmap dot compress format dot jpeg the quality let's go for a hundred if you want less quality you can go for 80 or 90 or whatever so it starts from zero to a hundred and then passing the output stream after all the image will be actually written to the media store because now we have this output stream that we get from our resolver that we opened with our resolver. Now, after that, after completing writing that image and compressing it, we want to use our image content value dot clear. So to clear those values with that metadata and then want to stop pending. So image content values dot put again, media store dot media columns dot is pending is now going to be zero. So we completed actually saving the image so we want to set that pending to zero to avoid any leaks and after that we just want to refresh our gallery you can say media store with the new url so update passing my ure actually then the image content values null null for where and selection arguments again so this will just update and also refreshes my gallery to be able to see that image and that's it now we can save any image in which we get the bitmap from that we pass to this function and then we save it as i said we use this resolver to actually save the image to the media store 
with this image collection to tell that we want it in external storage, time in millis just for the date it was taken and also the time, I mean the name, so we actually make this image unique, so it's like an ID. Uh, the image content values, just some metadata for the image, like where it's going to be, its name, its type, date, and its pending or waiting to be saved. We then get a URE from this metadata and the image collection where we, tell, we want it in external storage. We make sure that URE isn't null. We have a try catch block. If something goes wrong, we just delete that URE from our resolver. Otherwise, we open an output stream with it again where we pass our URE, we get the output stream, and then we just save that image with our bitmap. Of course, we compress it, we want a JPEG, and we use the output stream to save that. And then we clear the metadata from the image content values. We no longer padding, and then we update our media store with the URE and simply refresh the gallery. For saving a video now, it's going to be almost the same with some little differences. So save a video. And for video, we don't have a bitmap. We have a file of type file, not float, but actually file. We still need all of those things except now we are dealing with videos so video right here and then since we want to save a video directory uh, movies the display name again a video right here the mind type is going to be of course a video or actually video and then the format mp4 that's what we are going to go for date taken can be this one again as I said, we can go for date added. If we didn't shoot the video, is pending is one. So that's the same thing. Now, actually, the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this one to video collection. Since that's a video technically, that's going to be the same with this one. And again, right here. The other stuff are going to be the same except for how we actually save the image. So we still need to open an output stream. But now what we want to do is to have that output stream in a temporary variable that we use and then clear that later after finishing with it so we don't have any leaks. So we're going to use the use block where we get an output stream like this. And now I want to open an input stream with my resolver where I can read that file and then copy it to the output stream. So resolver dot open input stream that needs a URE. So that's going to be URE from my file. So it's not this one, but a URE from the file. So this input stream is going to read that file. And then again, I want to have that input stream in a temporary variable that I want to delete after use. So we're going to use the use block where I get an input stream. Let's just name it like this. And then I want to copy what this input stream reads to this output stream. So input stream dot copy to my output stream. And I'm done. So I just read that with my input streams from the file and I save it to the output stream that I opened with my resolver. And of course I clear those instances after use. That's why I use the use block for both input stream and output stream to not have any leaks. This one and all of this is going to be the same. Nothing is going to be different. It's just the way we save it is a little bit different. There we need to compress that image using that piece map and we give it the quality, the format, and then it will be written to this output stream. In this case, we read it with this input stream, this one, and then we just copy what we read or we write that to our output stream and we clear everything and everything is closed and cleared after use. For audio files, it's going to be just like a video. There's no difference except that it's an audio. So save audio. Well, it's going to be the same. It will take a file, except now we need audio right here. We can also name this one. Let's rename it everywhere. And maybe here as well. And right here. So yeah, the next thing is we want to save it to our music directory. The display name is going to be, no, okay. So this one was called image, nope, video. And then of course, since this is a video, we don't want this 
gpg right here we just want to name this as my video file if my file already has a name if i already give it a, uh, a name i can write file dot name if i want to or i can name it with my time in millis it's going to be the same it depends on what i want and the same with the name of my audio file if it already has a name we can use that if not or i mean technically it does have a name if we want to use this one we can use it like this and then the mind type is going to be audio since it's an mp3 in this case it's going to be mp eg like this this is mp3 we can still keep this date added pending everything else is going to be the same right here nothing is going to change it's all the same thing now we are going to try with an audio file we try saving an audio file to our emulator if you have a bitmap or a video you can try with those for example if you are creating a camera app you can pass a bitmap that you took or a video file that you recorded in my case i just have this mp3 audio file in raw and i'm going to get the file from there and pass it to this function save it to see if it's actually saved or not and to get the file from that audio file I just have this function that does that so I pass a resource ID that reads the audio from raw of course I pass the resource ID and it just creates a file this is its name and uh, of course .mp3 as I said you when, when I said we can use a, the file name like this file dot name that's going to be this one temp audio dot mp3 but I don't want to use this one I can give it my own name like this all right and then again i open an output stream i use that to clear it later and then i will write what i have in my input stream that i got from the resources id to my output stream and i return the file okay so let's go to our main activity i already written some code right here in which i just create an instance of my class which is the media store class the resource id is going to be my audio file which is this one i have in row and I pass it to my get raw audio file to at the end get a file so actually this one is called file I'm sorry not risk ID file that I pass to my audio or my save audio function since that's a suspend function it needs a coroutine scope if you are going to call this from your view model you can use your view model scope I'm just in an activity I'm using run blocking now let's run the app and see if this actually does save the audio file but let's first of all open our emulator file manager and then let's go to our external storage search for music right here it's empty let's run the app if it saves then it will appear right there okay the app didn't crash nothing happened let's open that and here it is as you can see it's working just fine and if you have a bitmap you can save that if you have a video you can save that and everything will be saved and working just as expected and now in this video we saw how of course this works without permissions and only works from underweight 10 and above so now we learned how to save videos images and audio files to our media store or in general media files so this is it for this video see you and bye